Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business, as well as other things. And today's episode, we have breaking news coming out of Indiana. Uh, we have a couple of recalls that have been announced, including one by Grand Design RV themselves. But here's the problem. A lot of you, especially if you've had frame failure or frame flex issues, you're not going to be happy about it. Okay. I'm also going to talk about some things that I think are really important right now, especially if you're in the market to sell your RV or buy a RV, because there's a little bit of niche things that I've noticed over the last two, three weeks that have become habit, both at the dealership level and at the customer level. And I want to try to get the communication between dealers and customers to be a whole lot better. So your shopping experience is a whole lot better than what it is right now. And I'm going to get into that in this episode. First off, I'm sorry about my throat. I'm super sick. Um, I don't know. I just, if you were seeing me on Saturday night during the live stream on the main channel, I don't even know how I went an hour. I mean, two-ton Tessie is still sitting on my on my chest and right here on my nose too. Like right, if you if you're watching on YouTube, it's like right above my, right between my nose and my my forehead is just brutal. But anyway, what I want to start with is, and I'll put the article in the description box of this podcast. So even if you're listening on Spotify or Amazon, YouTube, etc., you'll be able to click on this article says um, at the top, the following is the latest list of RV recalls compiled by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Per strict protocols, manufacturers will next notify its dealer partners of the recall notice. Each notice will include details of the affected vehicles as well as the appropriate remedy. And the first one was by Forest River, the Coachman Prism 24B Motorhomes. The federal information lab label may indicate the incorrect number of seat belts installed, resulting in an incorrect cargo carrying capacity. Forest River will mail new labels free of charge. Okay. Now, I'm going to call out Forest River a little bit on here, specifically Coachman. So the president of Coachman's name is Bob Dumb. Okay. And no, not dummy, dumb. Okay. And this is on Bob. Because first off, we all know that the Mercedes chassis suck when it comes to cargo capacity. And if you don't know they suck, it's just because you haven't done enough homework yet. Okay. But there's, there's only three reasons why you buy the Mercedes diesel classes. Okay. Number one is you feel like you have to be environmentally friendly. And to you, the eco diesel, even though it doesn't get much better gas mileage than the regular Fords, and I'll explain that in a minute, uh, you're gonna do it that way. Number two is you gotta have the Mercedes emblem. Or number three, which is the most common scenario, is the fact that you want something a little skinnier. You don't want the big eight and a half foot wide. You want to drive something that's like a foot less wider. And a lot of folks feel more comfortable that they can actually have more control doing that. So all that is very, that's the most common reason. So what that tells me is that the cargo carrying capacity on these 50 Coachman Prisms is going to go down more than likely. It ain't going to go up. It's going to go down. So once again, one of those situations where, to me, and excuse my language for saying this, but it kind of feels like a jackass move because they don't build a whole lot of these. Maybe, what, five, six hundred a year? So you're telling me 10% of what you were going to release has a sticker problem? Really? My most, and again, this is my opinion. This isn't fact, okay? But in my opinion, and I used to sell prisms. I actually liked prisms, okay? But to me, it's like, 
okay, so you probably went to a show, saw everybody was complaining that the cargo capacity was too small. Oh, well, we'll just forget about those two seatbelts that are in there and just throw a label on there. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, that kind of that kind of pisses me off. But then again, you know, it doesn't surprise me. But that's on Bob Dumb. That's not on anybody else. I mean, they they got to be they got to be better at that. You know what I mean? I mean, the people that are going to buy the Mercedes are always going to overload them. You're never ever going to be within specifications if you buy the Mercedes chassis. It's never going to happen. Let me explain why real quick cuz a lot of people are confused by this. So Mercedes builds a chassis, sends it over to the factory. The factory is not allowed to modify or stretch that chassis at all. They're not allowed to reinforce it, nothing. Mercedes gives them specific instructions on what they have to do. That's why you don't see a lot of varying floor plans in those 24 MBs or 24 Ps or 24 Vs. That's why you don't see a lot of variation is because Mercedes is very specific on how you have to have the motorhome set up, okay? So that brings me to number two. When you go to Ford, and let's say the old Ford V10s, they used to go to a company called Moride. And Moride is the only, I think the only or one of only three companies that's allowed to stretch and reinforce the Ford commercial chassis. So that's why your cargo carrying capacities are much larger in a 24, 25 foot Ford gasoline Class C than it is in a Mercedes, okay? So the biggest difference is in the chassis capacity, right? One's allowed to reinforce and stretch, one is not, okay? So again, nothing wrong with it. I'm not telling you don't go buy a Mercedes, but don't buy the Mercedes because of the cargo capacity because you're never gonna get enough cargo. Never. By the time you fill up your water, by the time you fill up your fuel, you're almost at capacity with any of these Mercedes. Especially if it has one or two slides. Especially if it has a bigger refrigerator, solar panels, generator on board. I mean, literally, you're... you're, you're <laughs> I mean, I'm not joking. By the time you put you, you and a couple passengers and fuel and water, you're at capacity before you put any equipment in, before you put a fishing pole, a, a cooler. So everybody that rides around in these Mercedes Class C motorhomes are all riding around for the most part overweight, okay? So if you're buying, if you're not moving on a Mercedes because of cargo capacity, but you gotta have a diesel, you, you really need to have a heart to heart with yourself, just to let you know, okay? All right. The second part is Grand Design RV LLC is recalling 1,469 2024 Solitude and Momentum fifth wheel trailers. The U-bolts may have been improperly tightened, which can cause the axle to move out of position. Dealers will replace the U-bolts free of charge. Owner notification letters are going to be expected to be mailed out on March 27, 2024. So in essence, nobody's done shit about the frame failure and frame flex, okay? Now, out of the hundreds, hundreds of people that have reached out or communicated with me about frame flex and frame failure, all of you have said you've reported to the NHTSA. Obviously, I believe that's not going to get anywhere because... We're talking about hundreds of people spread out over six year models. Okay, got to think about that, okay? So just imagine this, guys. I know this is probably going to piss a lot of you off. You're probably going to be upset with me over saying this. And you guys are probably mad at, and upset with some of the folks that have bought themselves out of their solitude or, or momentum or bought themselves, got themselves out of it, like completely bought back, or whatever the case may be. You can get mad at them. But I would tell you that you might get mad at them. But the problem is, is that so far, nobody's been able to gather close to 1,500 of these things built in the same year 
to the NHTSA. Otherwise, this would have been released already. So I've seen people who have told me that they've continuously reporting and continuously reporting and continuously reporting. And I get it. Don't stop fighting the fight. Okay. Grand Design, all the allegations and speculation about frame failure that they're having with Solitude and Momentum fifth wheels needs to continue to be said. I'm going to continue to say it. It's never going to not be said on this podcast. Okay. I might take a break here and there from it because there's going to be other things that are going to come up as we get closer to summer. But I'm going to dedicate at least two or three episodes a month just to frame failure and frame flex so it's always fresh on people's minds and always, always hopefully going to reach new people. But let me tell you, if, if, if someone goes and buys a brand new Momentum or a brand new Solitude, with all the information, all the bad shit that's been that's allegedly been going on, and now a recall on U bolts, you 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 really either did not do your homework or you just have drank the Kool Aid, because there's just too many out there, guys. There's just too many fifth wheels out there. There's too many brands that have been doing it for a very long time. Yes. The problem is, and this is the biggest problem that that I have, and I used to have a long time ago. So I was top two, top three, Heartland Cyclone, Heartland Bighorn, Heartland Landmark salesperson back in the heyday when they were built like tanks. They're built like crap now. But when they were built like tanks, um, hold on. Mm. When they were built like tanks... They're ugly as hell inside, but ugly, okay? And people judged. The reason why I never took anybody inside until I made a presentation on why Heartland does what they were doing back then is because if you had a young lady or a carpenter or, or, a, car, or a contractor of any kind walk into the unit without explaining what they're doing, they'd walk in, look at the cabinets, and just assume it was crap quality because the cabinets were cheap. So if you're going into a Grand Design Momentum, Grand Design Solitude, even a Brinkley, okay, and you're just so impressed by the quality of the cabinets, why aren't you looking at other things? You know, if, if, if I were a customer and I've seen all these allegations against a manufacturer at the level and the level of disrespect that they're allegedly having with their customers or showing their customers. I would never walk in one ever again. I would say, screw the cabinets. Let's go look at other stuff and look at the frame. Let's go look at the underbelly. Let's go look at how they put everything together. Let's go look at other shit that doesn't have to do with the fucking cabinets. Because that's all I ever used to hear, okay? And I used to get a lot, half the customers that told me they were, were dead set on a grand design would come back and buy one of my products years ago. Why? Because I knew my product. I knew how it was put together. I knew what it was built to like. It wasn't, well, ain't, it pretty, ain't it pretty? Don't you know buy it? You know grand design has the name like Louis Vuitton and Gucci. I've heard some of the bullshit fucking pitches that sales guys have for grand design. And I'm like, dude, you don't even know how they put it together. You don't even really know how the process actually works. You know, I mean, you know, and, and this is, this to me, strike three. I mean, I, I will never, I, if they came up to me now and said, Hey, we want to be on your lot. I'll tell them pound sand. I mean, you know, if my owner says otherwise, that's a different story. But if it was my choice, I would never have them on this lot. Ever. That's strike three. First, you guys have one of the biggest axle recalls. It was huge. Back in, let's see, 2015, 2016, before Winnebago bought them. Huge axle recall on their fifth wheels. Now you sell to Winnebago, and now you have... 
all these allegations and speculation of frame failure, and now you have another major re major recall with probably close to 20% of the inventory that you bought or built over the last six, seven months. How can you guys trust these guys? I, I want to know. I mean, I'm a dealer in my opinion. I wouldn't trust them. So, you know, I mean, this is craziness. This is ludicrous. I mean, I just don't get it. Um, speaking of trust, <laughs> so look, the other day I was talking to a buddy of mine, um, and my buddy was selling somebody, a, I think he was selling somebody a Paradigm or a Valor. He was selling them an Alliance product. And after he sold these folks, they, they sent their neighbors in. And he said, it was night and day. He goes, the people I was working with, very open, very communicative. Um, you know, they they communicated really well with me where I could direct them kind of in a direction. In fact, we found something for less money than what they budgeted. And I go, okay. Says the other folks they sent in wouldn't say nothing to me. Wouldn't give me the time of day. And I told him, I said, you know, a lot of it has to do with the fact that folks are taught old school methods of how to go shopping for a vehicle. And <clears throat> it's don't give anybody any, any information. Keep quiet. Shut up. Don't say anything. You know, I always revert to and how I how I used to approach people. So I. I remember a while back ago, I had a customer who walked on a lot. He was looking at a Coleman. So, yeah, I was working at a camping world up in Vacaville, California at the time. Guy walks in. Everybody, every sales guy at the Vacaville location had talked to this couple. And they had been in, like, probably a dozen times over a six-month period. Guy just didn't communicate with anybody. Finally find out, I decided to go talk to him because nobody else wanted to. So I went out and talked to him. He came out to look at the same Coleman travel trailer. It's a rear, rent, rear lounge. Probably seen it a million times or seen ones like it a million times. But I didn't assume anything. I, I knew it, but I didn't like make that assumption towards him. But I introduced myself. He wouldn't even give me his name. Just started going on and on about just how... You know, nobody knows what they're talking about. And, you know, he's been to so many places and everybody keeps giving me the wrong answer. Blah, blah, blah. And I go, oh, okay. And I said, uh, hey, what do you do for a living? And he says, I'm a contractor. I said, okay, great. So when I come to your house, and this is why I always say to guys, when I use whether, if I come to your, if, if I have you come to my house and I want you to bid a job, and I don't, uh, you say, well, what do you want done? And I, you say, you know, I say, I don't know. You tell me. Or if I went, you know what? I'm not really sure. And if you ask me, well, how much is your budget? You know, I don't really know. What, what would you do? And he says, I just walk away. So that's probably why you're getting bad information, sir. Because you're not giving any information on what you're actually wanting. And I said, but hey, you know what? I totally understand. I'm going to give you a lot of space. When you're ready to give me some information, come on up. If that's today, if that's tomorrow, if that's next year, whenever you feel comfortable to actually come give me some information so I can assist you, I'll be more than happy to help you out. I walk away. As I walk away, I can hear footsteps behind me and it's his wife. And his wife says, would you really help us? And I said, yeah, but I want information. I'm, I, I can't help you on your journey without information. And I told her, I said, the old school, keep your, keep your, don't tell anybody anything. See, that's the bullshit that came out of the fucking car business because of sleazy salespeople. The majority of sales professionals in the RV business would not survive in the car industry. And the car industry guys generally don't survive in the RV world because they're two different worlds. Dreams and toys versus a need. 
high pressure, high sales tactics. Got to get them done because a, a car buyer buys within 48 hours. RV buyers buy within 60 days. The average person that buys an RV, 66.7% of RV buyers buy within 60 days of going on their first lot. It's extremely rare that anybody buys the same day. First day out, we're buying. That's very rare. That is like one in a million that that actually happens. Now, it might be the first time they're on your lot, but maybe they've been to 10 or 11 other places over, let's say, a two-month period or three-month period. So it's a different animal. So stop going to an RV place or stop calling an RV place as if they're a car dealership. Stop that behavior and you're gonna have a better experience because you're gonna weed out the idiots. So to finish the story about this guy, so this guy finally opened up to me. It took him about two hours because I walked away. I told him when he's ready, I'll be in that cubicle over there. So they walk back two hours later after wandering the lot and super confused. They've been at it and come to find out they've been shopping for over a year. Can't make a decision. Finally, he comes into the office and he says, I have a $30,000 budget. What can you show me? Okay, what have you? And I just asked him, I said, obviously, $30,000 hasn't worked out for you. So what what have you seen at 30 grand that actually checks off? Seven out of the 10 boxes. He goes, nothing. I go, okay. So are you cash or you finance? Well, that doesn't matter. I only care. And give me the same bullshit everybody gives me because they think it's a car purchase. I only care about the out the door number. Okay. I, and I, I always tell people back, I don't care about the out the door number because the out the door number doesn't matter. What matters is what we get to collect and keep. Anything else that has to do with the government, like sales tax or license, that goes to the government, so that money doesn't matter to me. So are you writing a check or are you not writing a check? And he just stormed out. Off he went. Now what's interesting was when I was at Camping World, I only had like 2,000 subscribers. But I had one of the guys at work actually shared one of my TikToks. And he found me on, found my RV financing videos on YouTube through TikTok. Because I had it linked at one point. He came back the next day and gave me the biggest apology and said, I've seen all your RV finance videos. He says, we want to finance the RV. Okay, great. So at $30,000, how much do you save for a down payment? We save it five grand. Okay, five grand, 30,000. That's usually between 250 and 275 if you got good credit. Okay, and I said, let me ask you something. If you could go up to $40,000 and get close to what you want, five grand down, but your payment goes from 250 to 275 to let's say 300 to 325, would that work for you? Would the 40 grand and the 325 work for you? See, I always confirm the money, because sometimes guys, you guys are financing them for a short, I've seen guys who finance them for like only two or three years. So they more care about what they're financing because they might have a bonus check coming in or they might be have, you know, have a couple of investments that are panning out or maybe they're coming into some extra money at the end of the next three years. So they're just going to pay it off real quick, right? So a lot of guys will say, I'll get 50%. I'll get guys that say, no, I'd probably be more comfortable at 35 because I'm going to probably pay it off in three years. Perfect. So at that point, Payment, we can set payment aside, right? Payment's going to be affordable. He's not arguing over the 325. He wants to be at 35. This guy said, yeah, that's fine. He says, if you can get us to 40,000 and 325, I'd be good with that. So bumping them up, and then I put them into a trailer that was completely different than what they originally were looking at. Because her biggest thing was countertops, big counter space, TV across the way from the, t the sofa or the theater seating, and lots of windows, and a walk around queen bed, okay? There's three floor plans like that that are under 32 feet in a travel trailer, but 
you got to spend some bucks to get them. You got to spend back nowadays. You got to spend fifty grand for it, but back then you could spend forty. Okay. That same day, they bought. They came back. They had the biggest smiles on their face, and all the sales guys couldn't believe it. And I go, guys, you got to get the people to communicate with you. If they can't, don't want to communicate with you, you're the wrong guy. But see, that's not true either. Because a lot of this is all on you, the customer. I know it's not something you want to hear. But I'm going to tell you that if you're there just to look and look only, don't go to a dealership, go to a show. Okay, I'm going to give you a secret. If it's a dream if you're two or three years out, literally two or three years out, not bullshitting people to try to get them off your back or get them not to, to leave you alone. If you're truly two or three years out, don't go to a dealership. Go to the local shows. Usually each area of the country at least has one or two RV shows. Okay, so if you live in central Oregon, you got Portland, you got Eugene, okay, if you live in uh, St. George, uh, Utah, you can go all the way to Salt Lake City, or you can turn and head west to Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas at least has two shows a year. Okay, Northern California at least has two shows a year. Everybody has at least a couple of shows where you can see 500 to 1,000 RVs. And all you need, here's the secret. If you don't want to be bugged, you don't want to be pestered, here's the secret. Go to a show. Go grab a shopping bag and throw a bunch of bro just papers in there and like make it look like there's a bunch of brochures in there and everybody will leave you alone. I'm telling you, every salesperson will leave you alone. You'll you'll be so left alone you'll feel like nobody wants to be around you. Because they won't. Because people with big bags of brochures, they're not real buyers. Okay. <clears throat> they're they're looky loos, they're kicking tires. And when you're at a show, a salesperson is really looking for people that are giving them buying signals. They're not looking to talk to everybody. Now, it's a double-edged sword, because when you do that and you have questions, you're probably not going to get them answered, and you're probably going to tell, tell everybody how rude somebody was. So it's a double-edged sword when you do that. But if you, hey, if you're three, four months away, Five months away and you want to start, be communicative about it. Hey, we're five months away because, you know, by then I'll have my car paid off and my credit score boosted. Right now, my credit score is not where it needs to be for me to be able to get a good interest rate and a good payment in terms. So within the next five months, I'm going to have some stuff paid off, but I want to start my research right now. I'm going to tell you how many guys during a weekday would spend two or three hours with you. Because then what they're going to do is they're going to do a, there's a, then you, after that, you got to communicate your follow-up system. Okay. So normally, now this is harder to do when you go see a big dealer. When you go see a big dealer, Camping World or Bishes or Lazy Days, etc., they are set on a, a, what they call CRM system. And that CRM system, they have to actually send you an email or make a phone call. The system makes them do it and records that they do it. Because if they don't, they're not going to have a job. Okay. But if you go to a smaller mom and pop type store, or you go to a place like, oh, let's let's say you live in Idaho. Okay. Bobby Combs RV, you know, or Oregon or anything like that. See, Bobby Combs has six dealers, if I remember right, six locations. They're all small locations. You go up to some of the older guys that work at like the Hayden or Quarter Lane store and they'll straight out like write down your info and they're old school, man. Okay, this guy said five months. Let's see, it's been two. Let's send him an email with some of the stuff we got new in that is similar to what I wrote down. So there's good communication, good follow-up. So that way you're still fresh and maybe shoot, things might speed up. Maybe, oh crap, you know, I paid off my car a little sooner. But Bob at Bobby Wayne Combs RV uh, send me an email with three new products that he just got in. Maybe I need to go see it. And he comes down on Wednesday and goes, hey, how are you doing? I want to see those three units you sent me. You know, it's supposed to be fun. And if you make it too much like a car purchase, you're not going to have any fun. 
So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. You guys have a great night and we'll see you next time.